Good morning, it's Brian here. It is another beautiful day in paradise where I'm bringing to you yet another entrepreneur that Expert Dojo have invested in, that we believe in, that we feel is going to build an incredible company. Uh, let me introduce you to Kumar from Doorbox. Hey, Kumar, how are you? Good morning, Brian. It's another great day in paradise, like you used to say. Excellent. I love it. And then we're going to talk today about your journey. We're going to take all of our listeners through why you started Doorbox, what the genesis of the idea was. We're going to go through the hero's journey a little bit so we can learn some of the challenges that you faced at the beginning. And then we're going to take you right through to not just today, but the future and what this billion dollar company looks like. Sounds good? Fantastic idea. I'm, I'm ready to go. Wonderful. And most of the people who are listening to this podcast are investors and are future investors. They are folks that are looking to try and get a return from early stage companies, very much like ourselves. They like the fact that when Expert Dojo are interviewing you, we're not interviewing you from the perspective of a promoter. We're interviewing you from the perspective of an investor because we have invested money in you because we believe you're going to take it forward. So let's kick off. Let's talk a little bit about Doorbox is, is an incredible company which is making huge changes right now. But take me right back to the beginning when you had the genesis of the idea. Bring me to that place and share that with our listeners. Great. So, uh, Brian, um, I'm a software engineer and I travel a lot to consult in different places. Now, when my father passed uh, uh, a while ago to cancer, uh, I love my father and my, I asked my mom to send some of his valuable belongings that he used for over 40 years. And my mom shipped that to me from India in FedEx. And I watched it closely. I tracked it closely. I was at the office at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the, got a, I got a tracking in my uh, mobile phone alert saying that my packet got delivered. I was very excited. I wanted to come home and collect it. And when I came home early that day, um, I came to our house and I watched around. I, and I couldn't find the package and I was, my heart skipped a beat. I was looking in the bushes to see whether the FedEx person placed it somewhere to hide from the porch pirates and it was nowhere to be found. And then I was worried and I went into my um, uh, security camera. I have five of them, watched it and I found out that somebody came and stole it and went. And I had five security cameras around our house and I was shocked and devastated. And that's when I figured out how many ever security cameras you have, it just doesn't do its job of securing your packages. It shows you who is coming and stealing your package, but it doesn't prevent packet theft. And that's when I decided I would give all that I have and invest my own money first and bring Doorbox to this world so that I can bring peace of mind to this world. And that's right. how Doorbox was born. Incredible, right? Because... We don't think about this. We think about the last mile all the time, but we never think about the last meter. And there are so many packages being left at people's doors because obviously it's not going to go through the letterbox. And most folks are not at home the majority of the time when these things are being delivered. So there actually is no safety. There is no real solution for 90% of people who are receiving these packages, right? Right. Absolutely. And why do you think nobody has tried to fix this problem before? It seems like such a simple, obvious problem. And you're not the only person that's having packages stolen. This has to be a billion, if not trillion dollar industry of just stealing these packages everywhere. I, if it was me and I was a thief, I would just follow a FedEx truck around all day and then I would go home fat and happy in the evenings. That's exactly right. And that's exactly what's happening in this world because 1.7 million packages are stolen in America every single day, according wow. to a recent CNBC reporting, uh, Brian. And Amazon loses $25 million every single day. So the packet theft alone contributes to $9 billion of loss every single year. And people have not... Um, uh, uh, found a solution or, or uh, uh, pushed to find a solution so far because people call Amazon and Amazon replaces it just like that. And until somebody loses a package that has enormous emotional value or something that cannot be replaced, 
that's when the problem hits home. And sometimes people have, you know, anxiety when, when they order something expensive, they have anxiety uh, that they want to see the package when they come home. Or if they have an expensive cell phone or laptop that they purchase, it's, it's always a stressful moment and, you know, uh, with full of anxiety until they come home and see it. And it's a problem that needs to be solved and nobody has solved it. And here I am on a passionate journey. And today we are world's number one when it comes to showing maximum number of successful deliveries with video proof. And we claim that in so Amazon. We're going to, we're going to get to that. So don't worry. We're, we got plenty of time to get to that. We want to make it through the hero's journey first, right? So take me back to the time, right? So you've realized it's a huge problem. The entire world needs to have this fixed. What did you, what did you do? in that moment? Did you immediately say, we need to build door box and this is what it looks like? Or obviously you went through turmoil and you sat back, but how, talk to me about how you went from, this is a huge problem to I am going to solve the problem and this is what it looks like. Beautiful question, Brian. Thank you for asking me that question. So as soon as I lost my package, I was devastated, I was sad and I, Hit my computer in the evening. I started looking for a solution in Amazon.com. Is there any, you know, solution out there? That's when I found out there were plastic boxes that didn't have any lock. Uh, there were metal boxes that was too small with a small opening. So there was not a single solution out there that I could find that would work. For example, a plastic box, people can, can just grab the whole plastic box and go away and nothing was anchored to anything. So that's when I said, you know what? I'm a damn good engineer. I went to a number one college in India. Uh, you know, the 0.02% of engineers go to. I got to be able to figure out a solution to solve this problem. And I said to myself, am I the only one who is facing this problem or everybody else? That's when I started Googling. And that's when I found out there were people out there who lose their wedding gown or wedding dress one day before their wedding. And there were people who lost their father's ashes after, uh, you know, this, this, there was a, a, CN, um, you know, CNN um, a recording where um, Michael Smir Smirkamish said that there was a lady in Oklahoma who lost her father's ashes after he, was, uh, he, he passed away. So I found out that the magnitude was big. Uh, the problem was big. It's just that nobody... Um, could come up with a cost-effective solution that was in the sweet spot uh, to solve this problem. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do everything I can and use my engineering skills to solve this problem. So how did you do that? You realized, okay, we need to have sensors, we need to have cameras, we need to have a secure location, we needed to be able to fit on the, um, on the door and we needed it to be on the porch as folks were coming through. How long did it take you to build your first device and what did that look like? That, that's an amazing question. Um, it was a tough journey, Brian, because I'm a software engineer by profession and I made good money out of that. And this is a hardware product. Although I have tremendous technology background, um, you know, I consult in all these places, you know, Google and other top companies. This is a brand new product for me the, out of necessity, right? So I, you know, tried all kinds of things. I have Fortunately, a, a good um, office space in India where I do most of my software outsourcing work cost effectively. So I hired like three uh, uh, people with you know, one CAD designer and then a few other people started prototyping. I got, a, got myself a 3D printer, started figuring out how to make it. So we tried all kinds of things that would connect to a doorknob. We mm. didn't want to, we wanted to use an existing uh, uh, setup in front of every porch uh, that we could anchor it to. So we said, you know what, door knob is the only one that every household has, whether it's a house or an apartment or a condo. Okay, all right, let me just connect to the door knob. So I said, you know what, I'm going to come up with an anchoring mechanism uh, that will connect to a door knob. So we had a significant challenge. Uh, you know, there are three types of door knob. One is a circular door knob. The other one is a straight door knob that's got an L-shaped kind of thing. The other one is a door handle. For a circular door knob and then a door handle, we could easily come up with a locking assembly that would nicely latch on to security. Mm. But for a, a straight door knob, 
we, we had to come up with something that would be very tight. So we worked a lot with inventing a lock assembly where we could adjust the cartridge so that it would fit securely to all kinds of door knobs. That took a long time. And finally, uh, we invented the one that would work universally, uh, not only to door knobs, to any place. And then we came up with a, a steel cable uh, and then we invented, put a proprietary wire in it where if anybody cuts the cable, it would trigger the alarm, a 125 decibel alarm. And then we came up with a parcel receptacle. So we had a locking assembly, a steel cable, and a parcel receptacle. And so each piece of each of these three pieces, we spent significant amount of time inventing, refining, prototyping, multiple rounds. I, I don't know, I would probably have created over 140 samples before I came to the final one. Wonderful. And then how long did that take? Probably, I'm guessing, 6 to 12 months? Uh, it, it took more like 18 months. Yeah, because it's hard, right? That's the thing. It and what, what a lot of investors, and one of the things that we try and do with these podcasts is bring entrepreneurs who have been to a significant level de-risked because that initial portion of actually building the product is so hard. What size should the box be? Where should the sensors go? How do you capture it properly? How do you make it the most secure? All of that is an evolving process because you're building it from new. And then did you have, I'm guessing you had some significant challenges at, you know, at that in an early stage. Talk to us a little bit about some of those challenges. Amazing question again. Yes, so first I said, you know what? Let's come up with a metal box. And we started working with aluminum because the shipping cost was getting crazy. So I found out all about shipping cost. And I found out the shipping cost is based on two parameters. One is the physical weight and the second one is dimensional weight. So whichever is higher, the shipping companies uh, base their prices on that. So when I started putting metal boxes, the shipping weight was getting extraordinary mm -hmm. and the cost was getting prohibitive. And then, so I wanted to create something that's collapsible so that the shipping cost would be low. And then I found out, I, I, we, we spent significant amount of uh, time doing all kinds of plastic boxes. And what happened with plastic boxes uh, was 98% of plastic boxes is, is air. So that, because it's, a, you know, we wanted to bring a you know, decent size volume, that was costing a lot to ship. And again, commercially not viable. So we had challenges. So metal boxes had physical, uh, you know, heavy weight. Plastic boxes have heavy, high volume. Mm. Both of them was costing us a lot of money. Then I said, you know what? I got to devise the method. So, and then I came up with the fabric and wires in them so that when anybody cuts it, it would trigger the alarm at the same time one could collapse the box very quickly and assemble it in less than 75 seconds and Wonderful. put it in its full shape. So that, 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 and that took, in hindsight, it's very easy for me to look back and say, you know what, you know, we did this, but it was taking a long time through the metal boxes and the plastic boxes before we came to the fabric one. Fantastic. So then you took the product to market and then did you do all of this with your money or what did you raise from outside? <clears throat> I did everything with my own money. I invested to date close to $700,000, Brian. And it, I was, I've been fortunate because in previous software companies, I was able to raise you know, good revenue, good, good income, mm -hmm. good network. So I invested $700,000 of my own money uh, before my friends joined um, and my other people joined. So after I started listing it in Amazon and after we got excellent reviews, angel investors started coming in and that's how other people joined and that is my friend what is called commitment when you put that amount of money into it yourself to get yeah. it right before you even bring it out to market to raise investment what that shows is something i've learned since which is that you are prepared to do whatever it takes to make sure that this product is everywhere not just in america but everywhere in the world that's exactly right and that's the reason I, again, invested significant amount of money in uh, uh, patents. So we have patent in 10 countries. We have over 12 granted utility patents. And we have three patents in America and nine patents internationally. I captured all the rich countries where the product can be sold at a high price and all the developing countries where it can be manufactured for the lowest cost. 
that way we can have the highest margin. So even if somebody else wants to get in, nobody can produce it for a lower cost than me and nobody can sell it at a higher price than me. So that was a massive research. Again, took significant amount of time and getting patents in China and Japan where the translation was significant, um, you know, costed significantly, it was a, it was a pretty uh, significant financial commitment for me at that time with all my own money. Wonderful. And then so you took the product, you got it to market, it's now built, it's ready, it's out there. You put your own money into it. You've layered on some additional money that you brought in from friends, from family, from angels to get it out there. Talk to me about the distribution now. You have it in market, it's there. What does your team look? What does your distribution look like? And how are you starting to get awareness out in the public markets about this? Um, I wanted to, because I have always done outsourcing since 1997 from India, I wanted to keep the cost very low. That, that's, that's been very important for me. So it, uh, all the engineering design, all the development, all the support, all the emails, everything is done out of my center in Chennai, India. And I keep, a, you know, I'm in America and I, I you know, I do everything from there. Um, so I sell today. Uh, so I have a very lean and you know uh, um, low cost operation. So I sell it to Amazon and to Shopify in my own website. Those are the two channels. 80, 85 percent of the sales happen from Amazon.com, and 15 percent happen from our our own website. And we learned a ton of things about Google Ads and Facebook Ads and Instagram and amazing amount of learning I went. I did a lot of uh, things that I learned, made a lot of mistakes and, you know, learned through the process. And tell me about some and, of those things that you learned. Um, I, I, I figured out, uh, for example, um, in, in Facebook, um, people love to keep sharing, but that's not, you know, intended audience. Right? People always think, you know what, hey, it's a great product, I'll keep sharing. But I found out the difference between quality and quantity. For example, in Facebook, I can get a lot of uh, sharing and a lot of views, but less number of purchases or conversion. On the other hand, in Google, every person who type quote pirate, there's a percentage conversion is significantly higher. So I found out although Google is expensive, the, it, it, it brings people who want to buy the product. So the quality of people who are searching for push pirates in Google is a lot better. Whereas on the uh, Facebook, people are out there for en to entertain themselves, to see other photos and whatnot. Here we are causing a nuisance to them by in, you know, interjecting into their you know, fun moment and showing our product. So I found out the difference between quality and quantity. I felt quality is better uh, in Google, although the quantity is less in Google, whereas in Facebook, quality is less, although the quantity is small. And that was a lot of learning for us. Wonderful. So you now have the product. The product is ready. The <clears throat> margins you've managed to improve substantially because you've reduced the shipping cost. You've also managed to build it with a material which allows you to get the right type of profit margin. Talk to me about some of the unit economics that you got to and why they are so attractive for investors now. Yeah, so our, what I wanted to do, Brian, was I wanted to first launch my version one. Uh, I wanted to make sure, be, I, as a software engineer, I know how expensive it is because I myself charge a lot of money for my time. So I didn't want to get into the Android and the iOS and the tablet and all these browser variations and the Chrome and the Safari and all that stuff and figure out optimizing everything and get into the software mess because I know it will be expensive. I said to myself, all right, you know what, first, I'm going to just launch a version one to make sure that I'm not dreaming about this problem myself and the world really needs it. So uh, my version one was simple, all physical combination lock, something easy to uh, operate. So my original, uh, my goal has always been for the first delivery, 84% of the deliveries in America in every any single day brand is for one delivery a day. Only 16% of the people have more than one delivery in a day. So what I wanted to do was, when 84% of the deliveries happen, when the delivery person come to the front porch, want to drop off, I didn't want them to put any ma ca in a complicated code and open it and drop the package because otherwise they'll just throw it and go. I wanted, for the first delivery, I wanted no lock, no uh, uh, you know, obstruction, no hurdle. 
So they would just take it, put it into the box, press the button, it should lock. So my goal was to have no code for the first delivery, only code needed for the from second delivery. Very smart. So I did that. Yeah, and then and then I built uh, my technology version. Uh, now now that I've been you know the version one has been successful. It costed me sixty three dollars to make it. I've been selling at one hundred and eighty nine dollars. Have has a good margin, and and uh, for the now the second version we are ready. We know the market is there. We have learned a ton, um, and we are going to scale it because one of the things that happens sometimes we come across is sometimes delivery people don't lock and go. They just put it out there and go, and people complain and say, "No, hey Kumar, you know, people put it in the door box, but they're not locking." The thing is. 80% of the problem of port piracy will always be, I mean, will automatically be stopped because when the visual attraction is not there, when it, something is hidden inside a door box, they don't even see whether there's, there's anything no, there or not. They don't so even look. Problem. Exactly. So, so, from, so, so the second thing we decided, you know what, we want to take the control away from the delivery people so that the lock automatically locks. And we have an amazing invention, Brian, and this is very important. There is a package detection software we have. We are the goal to be the first company with the twin cameras. So we have a camera uh, facing on inside on the inside lid facing down, and then we have one external camera facing forward. So as soon as the lid goes up and down, we have an accelerometer and gyroscope that records it, the z-axis goes to more than zero and comes down. It detects somebody open the lid. Within 30 seconds, we take a snapshot of what's inside. It uploads to cloud. We have a package detection software. It says, yep, there is a package inside. Sends a message, the lock automatically locked. Beautiful. So this way, today, that is in the next version, this, uh, the, the technology version, the delivery person don't need to do anything. It automatically locks. And the viewer, the customer gets a message in their phone and they can see their product inside. Uh, so it's, it's a really amazing solution. Before even coming home, you will know what's inside your package, inside your door box. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, and uh, you know, I remember even going back to the time when I was doing diligence on the product and I was trying to think of comparables in the market and what is it that's out there that's done incredibly well or not so well that we can look at this on. And I just kept being reminded of Ring and what Jamie had done to bring that product to market and the problem that he had solved. And, and Ring was very simple, right? He gave visibility where previously there was none, right? And rather than having to have hours and hours and hours of video, he used the sensors to only show the video when something significant or important was happening. And, but nobody's protecting the outside of the house. Just having cameras there is a waste of time because somebody will come, their head will be tilted, they'll pick up your package and they are gone. Even if you're inside, they are gone before you can make it from upstairs to downstairs. It's over. But what you did was you used his exact same methodology. You had the sensors, you have the cameras, you have the area of protection and you have everything that's happening. So the whole he said, she said, well, I didn't leave a part. Because sometimes it might be the FedEx person or the UPS person. Sometimes they're not putting the box where they say they're going to be putting the box. And there's no way that anybody knows if it happened or if it didn't. But with door box, they do. And that's what's so very, very, very powerful. You record, monitor, and keep secure the entire delivery system, <clears throat> no matter how many go into the door box. Exactly right. Exactly right. And they can see it. And for the second person, second delivery that's happening, when they come in and when they put it, when they put the code and open it, because we take video of everything and because of our twin cameras, they, they know everything is being recorded. So that even the second delivery person cannot retrieve the package and go out because we take a snapshot during every event. So, and we capture everything and you know, we got the full thing nicely covered, Brian. It's extraordinarily effective and intelligent. Beautiful. So talk to me about what happened with the go-to market. So you brought it out to market. You solved all of the kinks. You mentioned earlier on today about being number one on Amazon and being incredibly popular. Talk to us about the sales and how the sales have grown over the last year or so since you've come to market. <clears throat> yes. So we started, uh, we launched in Amazon.com in February 2020. And within one month in March 2020, COVID hit <laughs> and everybody was at home. 
nobody was going to office. And I said, oh my God, you know, what a bad timing. And they said, you know what, because we said, you know what, everybody is going to be at home. They're going to say, you know what, hey, I'm going to go out, out, outside and pick up the package myself. So we thought we, the sales were going to be down. But you know what, fortunately, our sales did not decrease. It, it kept going up. And initially, because I was funding with my own capital, I bought 300 door boxes first, then 700 door boxes, then 1,000. So we got sold out in the last, so February 2020 to today. Now it's, it's, it's uh, you know, um, by, by December 2021, in one year and eight months, Brian, we got sold out four times. And what happened was because of the COVID wow. and because, because, all the metal parts were getting manufactured in China and all the fabric was getting uh, manufactured in Chennai, India. The supply chain was completely disrupted, right? Because of COVID and totally unexpected. So I was thinking I had all these things planned and everything was ready to go. But all of a sudden the factories in China were shut down, factories in India were shut down. I couldn't replenish fast enough. Mm. So I got sold out four times in the last 18 months. Still... <clears throat> We managed to sell over two hundred seventy thousand dollars of door box. Last year was one hundred three thousand dollars of sales over only nine and a half months of sales. For two and a half months, we didn't have product at all. So, and we are trying to get raise capital and <clears throat> order large quantities of door box so that we never get into a sold out situation again. And, and what about the continued production of door box? Is that going to continue where it's being produced right now, or what are your plans for the future? Um, we decided we will uh, 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 source some in Mexico also uh, as a short-term uh, uh, goal. So in Mexico, the cost is about 18% more than getting it from China and India. So um, – in the you know as soon as we raise capital we won't you know initially get the 500 door boxes from mexico but right now we have very attractive prices from you know china and india so uh, and they can ship any number uh, brian so I, I plan to continue that wonderful and how much money have you raised so far um i raised 450 thousand dollars so far and um, uh, and and that's where we are right now we have about eighty thousand dollars of Money still in the account. Um, we, we are we are we are trying to get the next thing going at this point. And, and and you have the most wonderful problem in the world, which is that you have so many sales. Sales are not your problem. You can turn on sales tomorrow and sell hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. It's merely a question of getting the money for the production so that you can continue to benefit from what the sales bring. Correct. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about where this goes in the future. Okay, so we've talked a little bit because all investors, very similar to ourselves, right? We're all chasing unicorns. So that yeah. means that we want a company that's able to do five to ten million dollars in revenue every single month, right? We're looking for a vision that is a vision <clears throat> of the future which encompasses everything that's needed. And we're looking for a company that can get to a billion dollars in valuation. And if we're very greedy, maybe even $10 billion, right? So talk to us about the evolution of door box. Like, what does it look like? Today, you've sold thousands of door boxes. You're distributing them all around America and all around the world. You have a phenomenal distribution network. You have great profit margins of 65, 70%, which is fantastic. <clears throat> You've come up with a very, very smart methodology where you can squish it down so it's really efficient to be able to send it out. You've got a great attachment and product specificity where you have your cameras, your sensors, you don't have anything which harms the world and the environment, and it's really easy to get to individual places around the world. But talk to us about how you build this into a multi-billion dollar company and what that process looks like. Great. So uh, what we want to do is we want to be very strategic in our growth brand. So we want to attack the low-hanging fruit initially. And the low-hanging fruit is, if every house, I mean, if somewhere to buy one camera for a house or an apartment or a condo, it is for the front porch. What we want to say is, you know what? Hey, why buy a security camera for your front porch? 
replace that your replace your first camera with the door box because it will do everything that the security camera does and it will do what a security camera cannot do which is enabling e-commerce so so what we want to do is just get rid of the security camera industry at all we want to disrupt the security camera industry completely and replace that with door box which is a two in one number one that's a low hanging fruit number two our customers today, Brian, the biggest customers have been from the healthcare industry so far. Now, it, it was a it was an you know awakening for ourselves. We did not know that healthcare industry had such a big need. So, Alera Care, for example, wanted to order 300 door boxes on November 11th, wow. 2021. Yeah, and Jesse Magana, the director of supply chain, said, you know what? Hey, Kumar, hey, you are, we have pharmacies are growing all over the place. We ship to a lot of places where our nurses will come in the afternoon. Sometimes we take, take up an appointment from, from our corporate center. We want to ship our medicines to them. And we want our nurses to go there and collect it and you know, do the uh, service. We are looking for a product like yours. Yours will be awesome. Can I buy 300 door boxes? I said, Jesse, I'm really sorry. I got sold out. I will, you know, I, we will give you the next version, which is even better. So, so we have found out Pharmaceutical industry is a huge market, uh, Brian. And if you go to our website, in our testimonial, we'll see Simon Markovic, the, our, he's our world's first customer. He takes 26 prescription medicines every week. Unfortunately, he's going through cancer. So pharmacy and, and a medical industry is big. And uh, we want to order, do a lot of B2B sales with this pharma industry. Online prescription sales is 1.67 trillion in 2021, according to PitchBook data, Brian. So that's a large market. That's a B2B market. We will go with the uh, security camera industry, which is a B2C market, which is very large. And we want to plug it into the smart home. Now, if anybody wants to come into a house, the first place that they enter is the front door. By having your door box right there, we collect data, what time the husband is going to work, husband is coming back from a wife. So we collect all this data. So when people come in, data is money. Everybody is looking for data and converting data into money. So we will be sitting out there on the front porch collecting all this data, you know, that pattern, the trend and whatnot. And Doorbox can not only give peace of mind to people, it'll plug into the security camera industry, it'll plug into the smart home industry, and it'll plug into the online pharmaceutical delivery industry. These are all big. This is just three industries that I mentioned, and there are much, much more. For example, you go to Starbucks or you go to, you know, your you know, Olive Garden or your Subway or your Taco Bell or whatever, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, every restaurant you go to, there's always a long queue out there. Why? This is 21st century. You know, the technology is out there. The cameras are there everywhere. Why do people need to wait in line? absolutely ridiculous so what we want to do is after we take care of all the low-hanging fruit of the security industry and the smart home and the pharmaceutical industry we want to expand and put a you know door box will come in various versions right we have a single unit we have a, a multiple units we want to put in these restaurants and say you know what hey there are 20 boxes out there if you're buying starbucks from your local restaurant or whatever you just order in your app you go there you don't want to stand in line you just go pick it up you know, you'll get a notification on your mobile phone. You just pick it up and go. So in our opinion, nobody should ever spend time waiting in line. And today, millions of people spend time waiting in line everywhere, whether it is grocery store or pharmacy, uh, Walmart and CVS pharmacies, or restaurants or Starbucks. We want to get rid of all the uh, waiting in line, all the queues, and by, put, by putting a door box and enable that. So that's another industry. And again, people travel a lot, Brian. You know, for example, I've been a PwC consultant. I catch a flight on you know Monday morning at San Jose Airport. I fly to all over the place. And until I come back on Thursday night or Friday, I can't order use my Amazon order on, on a on a Tuesday or Wednesday if I want to buy something in a you know cold get toothpaste or whatever. I just can't do anything um, because my Amazon account will all deliver to my home in San Jose. Whereas with a door box, with a click of a button, you will find out. What are all the available door boxes around? We want to come up with the Airbnb model kind of thing, where you know, if somebody says, you know what, hey, Kumar, I buy door, I, I buy Amazon order, I, I order online, let's say five days in a month. 
remaining 25 days, I just don't use it. If somebody wants to use it, they can rent it. So what, is, what we want to do is come up with the Airbnb model where they say, you know what? I, I, I use for my own use for the remaining 25 days, I keep it available. So when you're, when I'm traveling to New York, for example, I just press a button. If I find any door boxes available, I just uh, you know ship it to that place. And then I go down and pick it up and go. That way, it's a subscription model. And for every delivery that people rent out and somebody else uses, they can get a dollar. So we will have a subscription model uh, and we'll have a cloud storage for the video and they can consume it for their own use. And when they're not even using it, they can share it for the other others to use and they can make money out of that. that that's our model. And the, beauty is, and, and the beauty is when Airbnb launched, Brian, I thought, why would anybody allow some strangers to come into the house? You know, when people can have guns and whatnot, I said, that's going to be crazy. That's not going to succeed at all. I was shocked that how many people allow people inside their home. Now, with the door box, it's just going to be outside. It's going to be a lot easier. So it, 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 we have many, many avenues for growth, but we will go in a very strategic manner, in a, in a phased approach, tapping one segment before we go to the next segment and grow nicely, Brian. Very good. And I'm going to leave you the last 30 seconds to talk about for investors why they should invest in this company and why it's so powerful. But before I do, let me just reinforce what you're talking about for a second here. So we are right now, we have moved from being in the cheap economy, i.e. we buy stuff from abroad, which is just an expense. We then moved to the experiential economy. And the experiential economy is where consumers wanted to go from just being able to buy inexpensive brands to being able to buy brands that they could experience. And we saw VR and uh, augmented reality and those types of things come from there. We then moved into the influential economy. And the influential economy is what we've all seen over the last 10 years or so with all of the creator houses that have moved on from the Kim Kardashians out there, whereby we're all very moved by what our influence are buying out there. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the just-in-time economy. And that economy means that we don't want to go to the stores to buy stuff. We don't want to go to shops to buy things. This is why retail has died. Even restaurants, which we go because we want to be with other folks around us, even those we want people to deliver our food and bring it home. We have we arrived in the convenience universe. And that means we want everything. We want it now. We want it taken to us. And we want it very simply done. Where Doorbox is so clever is that you bridge these two worlds. This world of I need to go and pick up things and buy things and go to these places, the physicality of the world, and the just-in-time world where literally I want something now, it's four seconds later, it has arrived and it is mine. Because between those two worlds, we require places to be able to put the goods that are actually being taken from them, whether it's food, whether it's clothing, whether it's something else that we need, we want it to be delivered and left in a safe place, which is convenient to us, that we're able to pick up and take as we go forward. So I see door boxes all over the world. I see every single corner of every single street with door boxes that consumers can go to and pick up what is theirs. I see it at every home so that when deliveries are happening, they're in a safe and a simple and an easy way. And I see them on site in the places that we're buying our food, services, and products from so that we don't even have to walk inside, especially if it's one or two o'clock in the morning that we're picking something up. I see a world of convenience that Doorbox is very cleverly navigating by providing what Jamie with Ring did inside the home and taking that to the rest of the world, not even the last meter. So the last 30 seconds to a minute is yours. Please share your email so that investors connect, can connect with you. Share with investors how much money that you're raising based on which valuation. And then tell them why Doorbox is going to be a better investment opportunity than any other investment opportunities that they have out there. All right, great. So my email is kumar at doorbox.ai. And we are raising 1.2 million, um, Brian. Of that, 
we want to raise the first 500,000 immediately to replenish the inventory order to get that going. And the remaining 700, we want to contact all this Alera Care and other pharmaceutical companies, do the business development to build the B2B market. So, and we want to make it very attractive. Um, so we will offer a $6 million free money valuation uh, this race. And uh, that's our plan. And um, to me, there are 10 countries in the world where we have patents. We have, co we have covered 49% of the world population with a door box patent. So it's amazing. And I want, to add, I want to make one more mention of the door box design and why it's a great brand. For example, people live in houses that have glass windows that's 1.2 millimeter thickness. And there are a lot of people who buy plastic and metal boxes. What my thinking is, why put a plastic and metal boxes to put a $30 item when you're living inside a house that's got only 1.2 millimeter glass window? So you, your life is a lot more valuable than this $30 or $50 package. So we have designed our door boxes absolutely optimal design for safety with the fabric and integrated wires and all that it's extremely cost effective and economic with enormous profit margin so the growth is tremendous like i mentioned we have run out of sold out you know four times in the last 19 months so we would love to have investors join our journey and we want to scale this growth rapidly and so the world and bring peace of mind and and amazon uh, in you know in the recent survey from cnbc 42% of the people surveyed said they don't buy expensive stuff from Amazon, fearing packet theft. We will be increasing significant sales to Amazon once Amazon can secure the packages. And we would love to be, um, you know, it's our dream that one day Amazon will just buy doorbox, just like the way that they bought Ring for $1.5 billion. My thinking is, if Amazon can buy Ring for $1.5 billion, and that shows a packet thief, how much will they be willing to pay for somebody who stops a packet thief. And Amazon is all about sending packages to people. And Doorbox is an amazing product. In fact, only product right now in the market that will fulfill Amazon's need. And it is a need is so big. I love it. I cannot think of a better way to finish the podcast. Kumar, you're a legend. We couldn't be happier to have invested in you. Congratulations on everything you've built. Absolutely extraordinary. And everybody can always contact me, as you always know, if you have any questions at brian at expertdojo.com. Thanks, Kumar. Let's build that unicorn, buddy.